Hey guys, welcome to the Jeep Solid Garage. So today I'm really excited to introduce you to the LOD Off-Road Destroyer Series Rear Bumper Tire Carrier Trail Rack and Fuel Can Carrier. I forget what this is called. But we're gonna go over the things I love about this, a few things I wish they would change and improve on a little bit. We're gonna go through the installation and why I picked this. So this came in three different packages uh, all together, weighs about 200 pounds. This guy down here, I think that weighs like 140 pounds. It is heavy. And they were not messing around with the packaging. I mean, good grief. Just trying to get into it has been a, uh, been a battle. I think it's time for a quick time-lapse opening sequence. Yeah, don't worry about uh, your package being damaged during shipment. I'm pretty sure they could uh, just drop the package directly from the airplane to your front porch at from 30,000 feet. Wouldn't have any issue with it getting damaged. Yeah, they do not skimp on the packaging. All right, step one, let's remove the old stock bumper here. Looks like it comes off with uh, four bolts on this side, this one little bracket, and this little bracket down here, one little bolt there. Let's remove some of the old hardware here. Now on each frame rail on, on each side, we're gonna drill a hole right here. So centered on this big hole, three eighths of an inch down, we're gonna drill a half inch hole right there on both sides. And a little shop tip, make sure you got a sharp drill bit because if you have a dull drill bit, it's gonna make this a lot harder. Yes, you do have to go all the way through. Wear some ear protection, eye protection. Okay, so now on the bumper, you see these little brackets right here? So see how there's four holes? These four holes are gonna line up with the four holes right here on the frame of the Jeep, okay? Okay. So there's two little bolts right down here and when those, uh, when the frame of the, or the bracket on that bumper is lined up with these two holes right here, we're gonna thread these screws or those bolts into the frame right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have these two uh, bolts ready to go in. Why don't you pick the bumper up and lift it up and so I can line it up here and put these in place, okay? All right, let's do it. I'm ready. Don't lift with your back, you gotta lift with your legs. You know, you keep your back straight and you lift with your legs. <laughs> um, okay, okay, how about I lift it up and you line up the bolts and put them in place. Is that better? Okay. Yes. Are you ready? And there's those two and then two on this side that are just the same, okay? Cause yeah, this, this is heavy. Okay. Come to the other side. Okay. You got both of them in? Sweet, good job. Thank you. And those uh, two bolts we put in on each side, those were your stock bolts off your bumper uh, from when you took it off earlier. But now we are gonna use our new four inch bolts. We're gonna slide these through the uh, other two slots. The one, that we, the one that we drilled, the one that's already there. Oh, and 
just FYI, I had no expectation of my daughter picking up this bumper. We did that just to be funny. And the backing plate on. Our washer. And our two nuts. Now I've got a jack here just to kind of help support the back side. We're gonna use our tape measure and we're gonna go around and just make sure that it is even all the way around. So I've got about three quarters of an inch there, three quarters there. The tailgate hangs down a little bit farther. Just making sure the gaps are even all the way around and then we're gonna go along and start snugging down. Yeah, this side needs to come down just a little bit. So what I can do is I can kind of push down here a little bit as I tighten these down. And just kind of get things, start getting things snug while you uh, are constantly checking that it's even. I moved the Jeep over a little bit just so it's on nice level ground because I also am going to take a level and just make sure we're level, which, boy, we are really darn close. So just get everything level, even, even gap all the way around, and then start snugging those bolts down. Now we're gonna attach the uh, safety chain bracket on the back with the four and a half inch bolts. We got our safety bracket there. We're gonna put our two other four inch bolts in here into the frame through to the bumper. Let's move on to assembling the door plate here. Got this little pin locator. It's gonna go on right here. And we've got two pucks to install. And we're gonna put this strike plate. So we got this uh, polyurethane bushing, and then this backer plate, and these 5 16 bolts through here. And we'll remove the old stock tire carrier. getting our parts ready to install the tire carrier arm. But before we do that, I'm gonna clean this out because mine, I have a few little metal shavings from when they milled this. So I wanna get all those little metal, metal shavings out of there. And it's getting a little, cold and rainy. Actually, I think it's hailing out. So I'm gonna uh, move a few things, back this Jeep all the way into the shop here so I can close the door and turn the heater on. Okay, a little bit of a tighter fit, but we can still work with this. So our next step is going to be packing. We have the bottom bearing and this is the top bearing. Absolutely have to make sure we don't get these mixed up because they are very specific for a reason. But we gotta pack these guys with grease. So we're gonna get a handful of grease here and just kinda smoosh this until all the bearings are just full of grease. And we actually wanna see grease starting to come out of this edge right here until it's just bubbling up out of there. That's how we know we've packed it completely with grease. All right, we've got our tub of grease here. So we're gonna get a handful. This is always the fun part. Handful of grease, and then we're gonna take the bearing and just smoosh it on the grease until we see it coming up through that top edge. And yeah, this is a messy, messy job. 
And we're also being very careful not to mix up the top and bottom. That's why I've got them labeled. Top's going over here, bottom over there. And you can see how it's starting to come up through there. So we're gonna do that all the way around. Okay, here we've got the tire carrier flipped upside down. We've got our uh, bottom bearing, and we are 100% sure this is the bottom bearing. It's all greased up nicely. We're gonna place it in nicely, straight, so it's tapered like that. Wipe the grease off our fingers. Then we're gonna put our oil seal on, and the seal is gonna go this direction. Get it on there square, get a nice flat block of wood, give it a couple good strikes. Okay, now we can flip the tire carrier over. Uh, and gently place it on top. I'm gonna grab the top bearing. Top bearings in, then we'll put this big washer and our nut. And their website does recommend getting a little bit of a blue Loctite on this before we snug it down too much, so let's do that. Inch and a half socket, and we'll snug this guy down now. And we'll get the little cap on there. Next, we're gonna mount this little latch right here so that it'll close and hit the little strike plate there. Just like that. And we're gonna use these smaller uh, one inch bolts for this. Now I've got a little bit of play in the uh, latch here, so I'm gonna just close it so it lines up nice. Hold it in place there, now tighten it down. Now the actual tire carrier, this is adjustable as well. And now I'm gonna dry fit this in. I'm just gonna pick a spot, kind of middle of the road, and put these in loosely because we actually have to, I'm gonna fit the tire up here and just make sure that uh, it fits properly because there's some specifics on how the tire has to sit on here safely. So these aren't tight yet, they're just finger tight on there right now. That's good enough to hold the tire on for this dry fitting. And the reason is the tire has to sit with the back, with the rubber actually pushing up against the uh, frame of the tire carrier. So let's lift this up. Gosh, that's heavy. Yeah. Because the way they design this, they design it for the lug nuts to actually pull the rubber of the tire into the carrier, into the frame. So you don't want it sticking out too far. It just helps snug it up. And this, this is out too far. So with it all the way back, which I think it's all the way back, with this all the way back, it is not touching. So I gotta take it off and readjust it. Okay, with it readjusted, now the back, the rubber is touching, making contact with the tire carrier. So I can take this off. Ah and get some Loctite on these bolts and tighten them down. Now I can attach the door latch holder doohickey. But before I tighten it down, I'm gonna use a little Loctite on it as well. Now we've got three points of adjustment to make sure that the tire carrier fits snugly against the uh, tailgate. 
So we've got this uh, arm here that uh, swivels as you open the gate. We've got this latch down here that engages the plate right there. And then we have these two pucks. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna open the gate up a little bit. We're gonna attach that arm. And what we want is when the tailgate is about seven to 10 inches from closing, we want the pucks engaged and this little latch here just touching so that when you close it, it kind of pulls it in a little bit tighter and it actually dimples these pucks a little bit so that they're snug and then the gate is snugly against the little latch down there as well. And with that, you should have no rattle, but there's three different areas there where you can adjust things to get it to fit snug. Now I'm adding a couple of my own washers here onto the puck, just so that, because uh, this puck spins so freely, that once I have it adjusted, once I know what the gap is I want there, I just added enough washers so that I could tighten it down so the puck is tight and I have a nice little gap there, the space that I want. And once I've got it adjusted where I like it, let's go ahead and tighten this down to lock it in place. And I'm gonna add just a smidge of grease here on this mechanism. Now I can install the little bump stop on the swing gate here. And there's a little space underneath, a little bump stop washer and the bolt. And our grease fitting. Now the brake light height is adjustable. Let's say I've got these on here just loosely right now. I went ahead and uh, put my tire on. So I wanna get an idea of how high I want the brake light. And yeah, honestly, it looks like I can put it at its absolute lowest level. And it just kinda of depends on where you want your tire. And I also have the uh, cargo rack, which I'm really excited about. But this uh, brake light adjusts depending on the height of your uh, of your tire there. And the trail rack installation is pretty easy. These arms just go on here like that with those eight bolts. And then down here at the bottom, we've got this bracket, which those four bolts over there thread into the bracket right there. Well, it'd probably be easier to put the arms on and then the rack, but I wanted to see the uh, height of the rack where I wanted it exactly. So I got a little two by four helping me hold it there. That'll do the job and we'll just tighten it down here because I think I've got it at the height I want it. We're pretty darn close. I'm gonna get a couple of these started then take that two by four out. So now that we've got it installed, let's go over some of the reasons why I bought it. This is exactly what I wanted. One of the main features I wanted, aside from a high quality bumper, which everything on this is high quality. I have no complaints about the quality of the welds, the thickness of the steel, everything is top notch. But the one thing I love about this style of a tire carrier and cargo rack is your tailgate, your rear hatch opens as one unit. And that's one thing that I really didn't want. I didn't want to have to open up a tire carrier, then open up my rear gate. I wanted it all one. And that, this totally accomplishes that. And it's a very great, smooth system. No complaints about how this system works. It, uh, it's flawless in that regard. Of course, the other thing I wanted is I wanted the weight of my tire and cargo off of the hatch, the rear tailgate, and onto the bumper. And this accomplishes that. And obviously I ordered the trail rack with it because I wanted a way to haul some extra cargo, extra gear on the trail when I go camping. So this was a great addition. 
And here I'm only running 32 inch tires, but this trail rack is designed to be adjustable. You can raise and lower it depending on the uh, size of your tire. The other thing I ordered was the tail light extension. So it's just a bracket that goes on the back right here to lift your tail light up. And this is uh, adjustable as well, up and down. Depending on the uh, height of your tire, you can adjust the level of that as well. And of course, I wanted a way to carry some extra fuel, not inside of my vehicle. So I got the carrier on the side here, and it's just a bracket that goes on the side. Fairly simple system. I got the Rotopax with the uh, lock on it, so I'm real happy with that. It's nice and secure. I did order the LED taillights that come with it. Um, I obviously have not installed that yet. This is gonna be a future video on that. And the vehicle's, yeah, it's a little dusty because I've been using it. Now, just a couple things I wish they would improve on. Not much, overall, super happy with this, but a few little details I think they could improve on. The brake light extension, they need to weld on just one little piece of uh, metal across the top here. Your plug here for your light is just exposed. The wires are exposed, open to the heat and the elements. The sun, the desert gets 100 degrees here. That is just brutal on these plastic parts. My wire is exposed. So I would like to see them put just a little piece of sheet metal across there. Easy fix, but uh, one little thing they can improve. The second thing I would like to see is with also the brake light extension, your wiring on your uh, stock vehicle, it is, it's not long enough. They, it's designed to run down on the inside here, but they need to offer a little extension, just a little six inch extension that comes with this kit so that you can properly run your wiring down behind it and kind of just get it out of the way. This I'm not real thrilled with. And the third thing, and this is just, hey, me being nitpicky, but on the installation of this, I would recommend using Loctite on a lot of these fasteners. They don't mention that in the uh, installation videos they have on their website, but I would recommend that you're, you get a lot of vibration in your vehicle, especially off-roading. So a little bit of Loctite, I think they need to include that or recommend that on their installation. A little bit of Loctite never hurts. And I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but I should tell you, this is on a 2012 JK. Uh, the tire I have on here, this is a 32 inch tire. So not, I'm not running 35, 36, 40 inch tires, but this tire carrier can handle those much larger tires as well. So overall, super happy with it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate the support. Check out my next video right here. Have a good day.